OCG metagame breakdown number three. Can we expect it? Yeah, you already see it, but <laughs> I was gonna say, can you expect Trabrigade to be the best deck again? But obviously in the pie chart, Trabrigade is taking 18% of the top cut uh, spots and others is actually just as good. Oh, not bad, not bad. Usually there's always a huge difference, but anyways, it actually is covering 50 top performing decks from 10 tournaments, which is still something, 17 April to 21st, which is only like, what, five days or something? 17, 18, 19, 20, Yes, I'm good at maths. Before you start, friendly reminder to like, subscribe, all the beautiful package. It motivates me so much to keep making videos like these. And now let's jump right into it. So this is it. This is the pie chart. Chai Brigade with 18%. Zodiac is in second with 12%, which is actually quite respectable. And then we have Code Talker and El Lich tied at third place with 10%. And then after that, we finally have Sky Striker doing well again. Oh my god, I was like, wait, this deck is supposed to be really good in the OCG with two engage. Why is it not topping like everything? Ever. Because with zero engage, people are doing better in the TCG than in the OCG. And the deck is objectively worse in the TCG. Like, you can't even argue. You can't even say, like, oh yeah, but Kigari, no, who cares? Bro, two engage over two more Kigaris? I'll take that any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it's also tied with a virtual world, which I want to say is probably just getting demolished by these other decks. I mean, especially Tri Brigade. Oof, this is the combo deck to play. Well, the combo, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Like, it's barely a combo deck, but it, it, it can do some combos. Anyways, we have Ad Emancipator after that, which is basically kind of like a full-fledged combo deck, especially with Needle Garbage, uh, O-Lion, Block Dragon. I am pretty sure the OCG still has all these cards, which should be crazy. Anyways, Drytron. Oh my god. Yo, look at this pie chart. Yo, you can feed an entire family of 27 kids with this. Insane. The variety is nuts. And we also have Endymion. Uh, yeah, we can even see the... Oh my god. Salamangrate, Shadow. Doll. Okay, Salamangrid got two, but where is Adignister? Interesting, okay. Yeah, uh, at least Code Talker is consistently doing better than both of, you know, Ignister and Salamangrid basically combined uh, together, which is nuts. And then Shadal, Altergeist, Danger, Dragon Maid, Gra <laughs> okay, yeah, Lawn Mowing, Chaos Thunder, Magical, uh, Magi Bullets, as we, uh, as we usually uh, call them, Prank Kids, Scrap Dinosaur. Is this the new way to play Dinosaur? I'm actually gonna make a video on this. This is really cool, because nobody's playing actual regular dinosaur. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure the deck is already kind of crippled in the OCG, but still, that's actually kind of nasty. And then Spiral, again, always that one guy who plays Spirals. And finally, Adignister not doing well at all with only one representation. Anyways, let's get into Tri Brigade. All right, so World Championship 2018 Japan representat uh, representative, uh, Fairy, uh, I don't I don't know this guy, went six and two and finished first and fourth, blah, 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 which had 30 teams, uh, blah, blah, his team, Ryupi, uh, his teammate, Ryupi, ran the exact exact same build and went 701. Oh, that's actually nasty. Uh, he wrote on Twitter, blah, blah, who cares? Uh, <laughs> basically, wow. Yeah, okay, so his matchup against Sky Striker is dreadful. That's why people are playing the deck a bit more. I know they actually play Imperial Iron Wall in Sky Striker. I actually saw it in a main deck, uh, I think once. Mm, yeah, if, if at least one person plays it, I assume a lot of people would play it because there's a lot of uh, net decking and stuff. Once someone actually tops an event with a spicy deck like Sky Striker, a spicy deck spicy yeah. for the longest time it was the most boring deck that everybody played but now it's like oh you're playing sky striker whoa that's actually unique can, can i see your list but yeah no it's uh yeah i, I can't imagine how dreadful the matchup tri brigade sky striker would be yeah you have to face widow anchor and iron wall and then all the monster negates just don't do anything at all against sky striker and against uh wait what is this shadow was actually a slightly good matchup what oh that's actually no exactly it's not a good matchup it's actually a horrible matchup <laughs> oh my god yeah no it's it's it, they, they can also always trigger the shadow fusion which will generate them free advantage what else do they have uh, super poly is there anything that is super polyable here this is beast warrior and this is i think fairy so they can if you please oh my god yo hey if you play super poly make sure to play mud dragon of the swamp in your extra deck because these are two wind monsters so same attribute but different types and this is how you summon mud dragon of the swamp apart from that you would usually have to rely on like fire earth or something like that well, especially earth uh, because of the zodiac monsters and i guess some other tri brigades or some other zodiacs or this guy which you'll never summon or the level the link to yeah not gonna come up too often uh, a lot of hand traps are being played again but still less 
than the typical pure Zodiac build. So one, four, ah, nice. The one Lancia, just so you can counter, counter it with cross out designated. I definitely get that. So four, seven, eight, 11 hand shops. Definitely respectable. I feel like, yeah, anyone in the OCG will, will always run 11 hand traps regardless of how their deck is kind of built to, to be around. And then, oh my god, a lot in the side deck again. Two, four, seven, freaking just everything to... One anti-spell though, that's actually kind of whack. I don't really get it. Is it because you lose the anti-spell and you just really want to counter with the crossout designator? Or because... Yo, the thing is, people should actually play the Dark Simorg with anti-spell. It's like the best lock ever. No spells, no traps for you. And then you do that with like Appaloosa it's literally merry merry Christmas happy land city turbo and then Imperial order red reboot blah 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 the package when you go red reboot you actually go for Zeus in this deck it's not like the actual regular tribrigade deck this is basically still pure tribrigade it's not really tribrigade zodiac you're only playing three zodiac monsters and one actual special summon which doesn't clog anyways your main normal summon is actually you know, it's always something that can... Yeah, it's always something that can do something. I, I still don't get why people are playing Whiptail over Thorblade. I'm never gonna get that. It makes no sense to me. You really want to play Thorblade, so if you draw two Zodiac monsters, you can make a Link too. So wh why would you play the Whiptail? Because the thing is, Zeus essentially does the same. It's like really good removal, but yeah, I, I don't know. Ma maybe it's like, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, I don't really get it, but maybe they get it and they give good arguments because everything that I hear is always like, oh yeah, but like it's it's good at banishing cards. Yeah, but who cares? You can send them and not destroy them with Zeus. But regardless, uh, Zodiac, all right, pure Zodiac. So everything I feel like is the exact same. It's always 11 Zodiacs with uh, what? Let me guess, uh, 14 hand traps? Three, six, eight, uh, eight plus 11. Oh my God, no way. <laughs> I just said a random number when it was actually 14. <laughs> oh my God, okay, yeah. So that, that looks like uh, 14 hand traps. Again, pretty respectable. Uh, one barrage, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, the day where people will play zero barrage, there there might be a problem with the de with uh, with people actually, what well, not with the deck. Uh, triple thank you, desires. Triple cosmic duster monster. But this deck is like so. Uh, I don't. I don't really know. I don't really know the term, but. It's like there's not a lot of innovation to be done on it. It's it's kind of like similar to Virtual World, how every single deck list was identical, and the only kind of work that you could actually bring to your deck would be like, oh yeah, which hand traps do I play? Or do I swap my hand traps for trap cards? But it's kind of a control deck, so the actual concept remains the same. And then for the extra deck, the only very small change that people could kind of bring sometimes would be playing Mega Clops or Gravity Controller if they really want to play Pot of Avarice in their deck, which I don't recommend. Pot of Desires is the best pot. Of course, it gets you started, whereas Pot of Avarice also draws two, but kinda, it, it's not as good because it relies on you having cards in the grave preemptively. So if you draw a bad hand and you have Pot of Avarice, it doesn't do anything, and you might have to kind of deviate from your regular line of play just in order to get cards in the grave, which also just isn't uh, the way of the Shinobi. But anyways, everything else is just kind of normal. Oh wow, the hand shops, I like that. In the side deck, two Nibiru, two Retaliating Seed, triple Lancia, Pankratops, triple Light, Storm! Whoa, okay. <laughs> oh my god, with seven back row removal and red reboot. Oof, good luck losing to back row decks. And then Regeki, Imperial, or uh, Imperial Order. Yeah, I was gonna say Iron Wall, LMAO. Vanity's Emptiness, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, this is gonna be the fun part. Code Talker. This guy went 5 and 1 in a tournament with 32 participants, but he, he finished second. Uh, how? I, I mean, I, I, I guess if there's like top cut playouts, but uh, playoffs. But, anyways, he ran freaking breakthrough skill in the deck, and this is actually well explained. It's because people could actually go into Zeus, and then they would send your entire field to the graveyard. So, if you go, if you get a hit by Red Reboot, you're actually gonna send the breakthrough skill instead of like an Imperm that doesn't do anything into your field, and then next turn you actually have the breakthrough to negate their Zeus so you can like safely play which is really good against pure Zodiac which is something that they are uh, going to have to be facing really often in the OCG but not really in the TCG obviously if you're following the metagame by the way TCG metagame breakdown on card brawlers tournament coming really 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 soon but yeah uh, for the main deck I can't even freaking tell you which cards they are because I barely know anything here I'm just really shocked to see that they don't even play the continuous spell that searches 17 cards per turn one sign at mining holy lord Okay, and yeah, no, no trap that summons extra deck monsters. That's like insanity. Oh my god. 
I can't believe this is that good. Hand traps wise, it barely plays any. It's like five hand traps because it plays a lot of actual trap cards, which I like a lot. So my question is, what is their thought process in order to decide whether they want to play a lot of trap cards in their deck or a lot of hand traps, as you can clearly see, and then only like three actual real trap cards. But here it's like actual, no, it's barely any hand traps, but like freaking 16 trap cards, which is really crazy. Uh, I mean, I can understand that because I play Cyber Dragons and hand traps just, they suck in Cyber Dragons. You, you hand trap your opponent just to realize that you bricked and that you can't play, uh, which is not uh, not good, again. But yeah, in this deck, I, I just don't get it. it. It really looks like I have to test the deck, but anyways. Uh, for the side deck, we play, I guess, six hand traps, so one Nibiru, triple lance. One Nibiru, but no cross out. Interesting, triple lance, yeah, double maxi. No, ma no maxi in the main deck, and he's not even... What? No maxi in the main deck, and everybody consider considers it to be the best card in the game. Wow, triple cycle duster no lightning storm he's actually siding the dust the cyclone instead scapegoat oh, I haven't seen that uh, since uh, 2018 uh, anti spell uh, vanity's emptiness red reboot the, the anti spell is everywhere and imperial order as well which might explain why people are playing cosmic cyclone instead of the other cards and since artifact Lancia is super popular that also explains why people are not playing evenly matched in their side deck anyways the final deck should be Edlich, and this is spicy AF so he's actually playing with ancient warrior card Cards, which is crazy. Look at that, man. Two Elish, the Golden Lord, two Lu Fang, three Sun Mu, and two Zuch Kong. Yes, I actually know these cards. Two Kristen Land because it's semi limited, obviously. One Black Awakening, Triple Tanky. Extravagance, even despite the fact that he's playing kind of like a, a semi combo package, which is really, really nice. And then Pot of Prosperity as well. I feel like that's overkill. Double Dimension Shifter because it doesn't really matter if your monsters get bad. I, I, I don't really get that as well. Imagine if your Elish just gets destroyed and you, you die. Yeah, I, I think it's. A bit dangerous but yeah I, I, is, they do get to the point of the package kind of makes sense but it looks like uh it's incorrect from like a good cards to bad cards ratio because if you draw this or this alone they do nothing if you draw sun Mu, it's pretty good or if you draw tanky but that's kind of it so apart from that and eh, it's pretty it's pretty trashy and then yeah two called by the grave one tactic talents triple scarlet triple conquistador one Hakuero, one wakanda forever triple judgment but no strike ah okay oh imperm is the only hand shop that he's uh playing wow and main deck summon limit and imperial or Order. Hmm. He's playing two synchro monsters, but he's only playing Gamma as the way to summon it. Uh, no punishment, no Entis, none of that. Dweller Exciton, Baguska, Baguska. These rank fours are actually really scary. If you can summon them reliably with your Ancient Warrior cards, you're going first. You can get Duster, and it doesn't matter because your Baguska allows you to survive. And then all of your trap cards float, obviously, and then next turn you just kill your opponent. And then obviously we have a bunch of rank five. Well, I mean, one rank five, the rank ten package. Zeus, because you're already playing quite a bunch of Xyz monsters. Link Spider, Triple Chuang Long, nice, because of Extravagance, you really don't want to play it risky. And then the Phoenix, which I feel like you'll probably never summon, but anyways. Gamma is, I think this is the only player who's actually citing Gamma. I, th no, actually, yeah, the second player uh, here in the top cut. And then, of course, a Triple Lightning Storm, Double Dark Ruler, Double Cyclone, Anti Spell, and, uh, so, sorry, uh, Duster, and again, Anti Spell. Anti Spell is in everyone's side deck except this guy. This this Zodiac player. I feel like it should kind of be in his side deck, but he doesn't want to play continuous cards because he doesn't want to send his own cards with Zeus. And Zeus is like the main card in Zodiac, so definitely something that I can respect. But apart from that, yeah, what they were saying basically in the conclusion is that Beast Warriors, it's literally their format. They've never been this good since 2017. Like full power Zodiac format, which is ridiculous. I mean, if you can actually do some nasty, nasty stuff with a uh, Char Brigade Zo uh, Revolt, which is like the crazy card that just sold charge and then makes the link for Amis Amis banishes a card or something without targeting so yeah even if Dragoon was a thing you could actually consistently out Dragoon in the tri -Brigade deck so tri -Brigade, even in the TCG what I really recommend you doing is actually just respect the, the the fact that it's going to be a better deck and start mastering it right now just so when it becomes broken you're gonna be ready for it but anyways that's all I had to showcase and talk about for this OCG metagame breakdown number something I actually forgot uh, what number is it uh, number three okay if you guys have any comments or feedback or anything let me know in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe motivates me so much to keep making videos like these and i will see you next time peace